Hey everyone. Hi. Welcome to see you next Thursday. Welcome to see you next Thursday. It's Thursday and here we are. So <laughs> seeing you. Yeah, seeing you. Do you do you see what Teresa's wearing? It's probably backwards to you. It's a total Golden Girls sweatshirt. It says Dorothy and Blanche and Rose and Sophia. Does she look like a Golden Girl? I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were discussing beliefs. Yeah, we were discussing our belief systems and how they either can help us or how they can hinder us. How they can either be expansive or how they can be limiting. Got anything to say to that? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always moment to moment. <laughs> I have general beliefs. Some of my deep-seated ones I don't always share with people. Intrinsically, like? <laughs> <laughs> like the power that I feel that I know that I carry, mm, I feel good. that I dumb myself down in different situations. Why? Yeah, I don't know, patterning. Mm, mm -hmm. um, and that's my true, my true um, belief systems that I'm very powerful and that I'm a master manifester. And anything beyond that is tripping me up. And I'm allowing circumstances and life experiences to make me question that. Well, you know, beliefs are just something, they're just thoughts that we keep thinking. So we can shift them and we yeah. can make them powerful and we can make them expansive. It's like or we can hang day. on, yeah, or we can hang on to the past and we can hang on to old stories and we can keep repeating those. Therefore, therefore like building up and strengthening a belief system that's negative and isn't really necessarily working for us. And so the cool thing is that we can always change our beliefs at any point. Well, we can always change our thoughts. And that's yeah. like really where it all began. Truly. Teresa's been reading a book that I passed on to her. Um, it's called The Hidden Language Code. And it's by Neville Johnson. And is that right? Is it Neville Johnson? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, before we end, I'll run and grab it. I should have grabbed it in the first place so I could show it because this book is really, really powerful. Um, we had somebody request, um, was it Shannon? Hi, Shannon. We had <laughs> Shannon request, um, you know, some like what we're reading, what, you know, what has helped us to move forward, or I can only speak for myself, what's helped me to move forward in my thought processes because my thought processes are the things that are creating the world around me. My world, the world that I'm Especially creating. Especially when there's not a specific circumstance for you, for example, right now that's dictating who you are. You know, you're not going to a job. Yeah. You're not um, opening up the door to a business. Well, all these things that create our, our what we are perceived identities, mm -hmm. right? Is that and what so you mean? Right now, everything is about using our minds to reshape our life and so it's we're pretty much doing a little experiment I guess we yeah we actually we really have been um, I told Teresa when we first moved here she wanted to just dive right back in and I said I can't just yet I can't I feel I, I feel kind of devastated I felt a little you just weren't inspired I, I and I felt devastated it's like I put 15 years of my life really more than that because there was all this thought that had been there prior to everything happening and and little steps baby steps that were being taken towards um, the realization of my raw food dreams and <laughs> right <laughs> and um, when we closed down our shops and so Shopsa, I, I, you know, I, I needed a moment to just sit with everything that happened, not necessarily go back and feel bad about all of it, but just kind of sit with it and let it simmer and settle. And I told her, I am working on my energy for the next year. That is going to be my job is to work on my energy. And I know that sounds probably so crazy. And if I had heard somebody say something like that. Indulgent. I would have thought lazy and indulgent. Yes, that's what I would have thought was lazy and indulgent. Like, who do you think you are? You know, well, it's See, me now. That is the programming. That's part of these belief systems. And I decided this last year. Nobody was going to get it. 
What? Nobody was going to get it. Get I'm what? working on my energy. No, I mean, I've said it to a few different people, um, my mom and dad being a couple of them, who are like, dude, you're kind of old to be thinking you just get to sit back and work on your energy. And I thought, yeah, okay, that's what you think. And that's what I've thought, too, for the longest time. I've always been a major hustler. But, actually, I don't like the word but, and... I still decided that I was going to be, for anybody who ever watched Seinfeld, I was going to be George Costanza when he decided to do everything opposite to the way he would normally do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. I've, I had a year of saying yes to things that I would not normally say yes to and, um, and just being quiet with myself and just really doing things pretty different. But using your thoughts that turns into beliefs and considering the words <clears throat> that shape your reality. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much about belief system. However you feel that you know yourself to be, mm -hmm. that you have that opportunity to be exactly that and then some. And also, um, I was listening to something where it said, because I've heard myself say, more please of you know this mm -hmm. reality of... Um, this last year, year and a half, mm -hmm. more please. And then I realized that's a limiting belief because truly I don't just want more of the same. I want more and more of, you know, more yeah. than more mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. So I would need to rephrase that. How would you rephrase that? Thank you. And I'm excited to embrace continued freedom and ease and fun and joy and joy and I look forward to more fun more ease more joy mm -hmm. more freedom and unexpected opportunities that are full of adventure and happiness so how would you go about doing that I would think about how they make me feel. So I would picture myself in, um, in Europe and I would be on the sea and the wind would be blowing and my flowy dress would flow up to the side a little bit and I had on um, a really floppy hat and I was just carefree walking. And so how is that around. gonna how's that gonna change your the feeling mm. is what will bring to me. Not if the you how were going to explain this to somebody else though that maybe doesn't know the what feeling. you're talking about. So how would you explain it that way? Like I, I get what you're talking about. You explain it by saying how will it you feel? And the not the why or the how is it going to happen, that, those things don't matter. Well, they're it's kind the, of none of your business. It's like... The feeling behind the minute, it. Okay. That's, that's what it mm -hmm. is. If for anything that you want to do. For any belief. So what are you choosing to believe right now? What am I choosing to believe right now? I'm choosing to believe that I'm where I'm at because I'm, it's, it's, I'm, where I'm it's where I'm at because it's where I'm supposed to be and that... Nothing that's meant for me will ever pass me by. And to be completely honest, right now, I'm really into incorporating affirmations into my personal daily practice. And my personal affirmations right now are this. The first one is infinite intelligence. Open the way for my great abundance. I am an irresistible magnet for all that belongs to me by divine right. Now that's kind of long, and I believe I got that one from, um, what's her name? Florence Scovel Shin. Amazing, she's amazing. Amazing writer um, from the, uh, going at, from the end of the 1800s into the 1900s. I think she might have lived through the 40s, maybe even the 50s, but her writings are still really, powerful for today. She was like a major, there was a whole group called the thought leaders of that particular time frame. And there was a few women that were part of that, which is kind of amazing. Um, and if you think about it, that was also the time frame where spiritualism was a big wave happening and people were, it was like normal to have seances and stuff like that. Like, can you even imagine? 
But anyway, and then my other one is, which I think is really, 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 really great, and it's really simple, and this one comes from, um, oh, what's his name? Um, God, why can't I remember? It'll come to me at some point. Another, like, way back kind of person. Um, uh, he was curing people of illnesses with affirmations. And then his practice died out in the 1920s, so this was a long time ago. But it is. Every day, in every way, I am better and better and better. Except for I say, every day, in every way, I am better and better and stronger. Because I really want to be stronger too. Not just better, I want to be stronger. And then my last one is, and this one I really played with, but it says, um, let me think for a second. It says, I am open and receiving freedom and abundance from unexpected avenues. So I'm really, with that one, I'm really trying to get out of my own way and allow for things that I couldn't even imagine I think what, to come in towards and me. And the idea too is to, because well, you, you were talking about hidden language codes, mm. it's to um, consider the lack in the ways Con, that we speak. Yeah, consider the language and that it's comes very, out of your mouth. And it can be very subtle. Oh my God, it's uh, so subtle. Um, for, give me an example of something. Like when you're talking about, oh, gosh, I really want to go. I really want to go to that place later tonight, but I probably shouldn't because I should, you know. I should, I should, I, I should probably continue working. Is that or okay? I should just save money. Or I can't do that thing because I don't have enough to get me to A to Z. That kind of thing is just, that's, that's very obvious. But there's more even subtle ways to put it. Like um, just being self-deprecating, you know, um, putting yourself down. Or like, I think we talked about this at one point, but like when somebody gives you a compliment, say thank you. So but, your belief is what? So my belief about myself is that I don't know, I'm moving through this menopausal piece, which I'm not, I'm, this is part of, I think, some of our belief systems. Like, you know, I've heard my whole life, when once you hit 50, you're invisible as a woman. Well, that's been drilled into me, so I have felt somewhat invisible. And, you know, and then I have these moments where some young girl, a girl, you know, I'm not invisible to her. I wasn't invisible to her mother. You know what I mean? It's like just taking these limiting beliefs and doing away with them or, or better yet, practicing something more powerful, practicing something more expansive. Like the next time somebody says something really nice to me, I'm just going to say thank you, which I've, I've gotten somewhat better at. Um, you know, oftentimes I'll say, thanks, I'll take that. You know what I mean? But, you know, or somebody asks me for ID in the store, I happily get it out. I, it's so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one of my limiting beliefs has been that once a woman hits a certain age, she's non-existent. And that's ridiculous. It's like we're way more powerful the older we get. We've got so much more experience. We know who we are. We're, we're powerhouses. I'm a powerhouse. And I just really need to remember that. Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Powerful beyond measure. So, in circling back to our belief systems, beliefs are just thoughts that we give a lot of attention to. They're just thoughts we that we keep them. thinking. And we can change them. And only we can change them. Somebody can't change your thoughts for you. That's yeah. really your job. Like you can't get poor enough. To make someone richer, rich, you can't be sick enough to heal someone. To make illness. somebody well, you can't be. You can be um, in a negative enough state to match somebody to commiserate, but guess mm -hmm. what? We're never helping that other person no. when we step to that level. Never. And you think you think you want to be helpful and oh, I'm sorry, and you know try to match that vibration because it provides the other person with a little bit of ease to know that they're not alone. But um, which is, you know, considering taking it's not a uplifting like though. That. I mean, how does it make you feel when you do stuff like that? It doesn't unless feel it's good. very authentic. Hmm. And wait, I've, wait, I've what thought it through. If I know, if I'm in that no. situation and I have a and I have a genuine 
authentic approach to move through with someone, then, then yes, if it's just, um, I'm just going along with it to, to conversate and to try to help to somebody, then that's not really authentic and that's not helpful. Well, I mean, we can go into a situation like that and help somebody raise their vibration by just coming in with a really positive attitude and maybe not like, Sometimes I'll find myself, somebody will bring something to me, I won't name any names, but somebody really close to me will bring something to me that is really negative. And often what I'll do is talk about like the many perspectives that could be going on, not just that singular one that's being viewed right now. And that can be really annoying to people. And I'm, I'm a Capricorn, so I tend to play devil's advocate a lot. And sometimes somebody just wants you to commiserate with them. But commiserating with somebody doesn't lift anybody up. It doesn't lift you up and it certainly doesn't lift them up. Just like Teresa was saying, you can't, you can't dumb down enough to make somebody smart. You can't feel bad enough to make somebody else feel good. It's not possible, that's their job. But we can try to shift the conversation into directions that feel more positive and more light and more fun, more lighthearted. That's another word that I'm really hanging on to right now is lightheartedness because I tend to be a really serious person and, um, and I desire to be a more lighthearted, joyful, fun individual. I desire to be more curious and more mischievous. Then I you desire say, to have then more you would fun. Say, I am more mischievous. I and am curious. mischievous and curious. You are. Mm -hmm. I am. It's I true. I am lighthearted <laughs> and fun. Sometimes. In the affirmative. Yeah. That's the way. Yeah. Just moving that direction. Because the lack words are I want, I need, I should, I could. No, could is not a bad or one. I could should. is better than should and would is better than should because but just you, I it, am it's it, open. It's like, Those right. are open. They're more open. Whereas should is kind of like saying, when I say to Teresa, you should have done it like this. What I'm essentially saying is you're a dumbass who can't think for themselves. Or and that you your think, way isn't as good as mine. Or you think you have all the answers for me when exactly. I'm a human person. Exactly. When you have the answers for you. I don't have the answers for you. I might have a way I think is better to do something. But for you. there's right for me and what I what I could say, see use could, not should, not what I should say. What I could say is, wow, you know, um, you could do this like this and it would shave 10 minutes off of what you're doing right now. Do you know what I mean? There's other ways and she could say thanks, but I'm going to do it my well, own that, way. The other thing is um, it's offering advice when mm. it's unwanted. Unwarranted advice. Unwarranted. That's mm. not always a um, welcome thing. Oh, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> So. In this picture, I know that. <laughs> I think it's just a general, general notion too. No, I think so when too. Offering advice um, when nobody asked for it. You know, it's some people just want to be heard. It doesn't mean they're looking for advice, or especially when they're just going about their day and then. Yeah. So just know advice. if you need to commiserate about something really sucky in your life, I'm probably not the great person to call because I'm going to lay out the different angles that it could be looked at. And what we could do to feel I'll put better. her phone number in the no, you don't comments below, and you can <laughs> test out this theory. <laughs> We're gonna sign off because I gotta put some potatoes on to steam. Anyway, thanks for joining us on this little bit shorter. See you next Thursday, and we'll see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you can, try to listen to our videos all the way through because that's what really helps us to grow our channel. And then also, I would like to know what your core beliefs are. So yeah, well, for those who want to engage, I mean, maybe just one. Just give me one. Okay, well, what's one of your core beliefs? I if you're going to ask, I'm powerful. A, you're powerful? Um, mm -hmm. I'm also, I said I'm a master manifester. Mm -hmm. I am. So you met core beliefs about yourself or core right. beliefs about the world? Myself. Or does it matter? Myself. No, I mean, for in general, oh. what you're asking of other people. Whatever, I don't care. Just be, just specify. Yeah. Get you some. Get you some. See you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. <laughs>